Look at him go, dude. What's up, everybody? I'm Noah. This is Madison Angling. This is my buddy Tristan, and we went salmon fishing today. Here's how we did. Alrighty guys, well, the rigs we're running today are pretty simple. It's just me and Tristan. So we've only got three lines per person. Uh, so we're rocking two downriggers. I have secret weapon rigs on both of these. A the secret weapon rig's really cool. It's actually two colors of lead core or 20 yards of 27 pound lead core that's on the end of your main line. And then I've got about a 10, 12 foot liter of 20 pound fluorocarbon beyond that down to our bait. Uh, and what that does is it gets your bait down a little bit deeper than the downrigger ball. So with Lake Michigan, you know, getting more and more clear every year, the fish tend to get a little spooky when it comes to downriggers at times. So getting your line down deeper below the downrigger ball is a good way to get more bites on your downrigger. So uh, that, that two colors of lead core, every color of lead core gets you down about five feet. So we're getting these baits about 10 feet below the downrigger ball. So on this guy, we got a flasher fly. On this one, we got a spoon. And then our next highest rods here, I've got our dipsy divers. We have two flasher flies on both of our dipsy divers. I got one down 80, one down 120. Uh, and I should add our downriggers, we have one at 40 and one at 55. Uh, we'll play around with those a little bit throughout the day. And then we have two board rods. So on this side, we've got a seven color lead core. So I have 70 yards of 27 pound lead core uh, to uh, 50 pound braided backing. Uh, and then our planer board on that, we've got a blue knight spoon on that one. And then on this one, we have a weapon rig, which is pretty cool. So if you guys are new to salmon fishing and are not into getting, you know, the coppers, lead cores, weighted steels, things like that, you can actually use a weapon rig. It seems really janky, but it works really well. So what it is, it's basically just, uh, you know, a regular trolling rod, eight and a half foot or however long it needs to be. Uh, I've got 50 pound braid on this thing down to about, I don't know, 20 yards or so of 20 pound mono for the leader. And um, basically you clip a giant lead ball to it. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So generally uh, you're gonna use either eight, 10 or 12 ounce lead balls, basically a cannonball. This is a 10 ounce. And you take a little piece of mono, like a foot long section of mono and OR16 red offshore release clip, the one with the little pin in it. And you clip this right in front of the leader. So you clip it onto the braid right above the knot that goes to the mono. And then this sets your depth. So basically, you know, with 10 ounces of lead, you basically let out just a little over twice as much line as the depth you want to get down to. So uh, it's a good way to fish tons of different depths with one rod. You don't have, you know, a set amount of line and a set depth that that line's going to run at like you have on lead cores or coppers. You can adjust that however you want to. So we have that running on an SST mag offshore board, the biggest board they make. Uh, and it's kind of specifically made to do that kind of stuff uh, with these, these weighted lines and these heavy rigs. And that's pretty much it. So we got a coho rig on that one, kind of up high. Uh, and we're keeping pretty much everything high. Basically the top 50 uh, feet of water uh, or so is kind of where we want to run a lot of this. We've got the one deep line, just in case there's something hanging down deep, a king or a laker or something, you never know. Uh, but that's pretty much the spread and we're probably gonna switch some stuff out throughout the day, some different spoons, some different flasher flies, things like that. But hopefully we can get a few bites here this morning. Go ahead and take it. I don't know if it's going. It's take it, just take it. If it's a coho, it may, here we go. We're on, we're on, we're on, dipsy, dipsy, dipsy. That's a good one. That's a big one. That's a king, dude. Can't get it out of the rod holder. There we go. Nope. Oh yeah, dude, that's a king. That's a king. Look at him go, dude. That's a king, man. Oh no, it's gonna be a while. Clear, uh, clear this lead core, this seven color. I think he's over it, but Dude, that is a big fish. That is a big fish, man. And that is why you have lots and lots of line on your rods when you're salmon fishing, guys. This is a big king. This is a big king. You just gotta let them run, too. You can't, you can't really do a whole lot to, to stop them. You just gotta let them run. And this is kind of where having a beefy reel guys it's kind of important you got to have something that has decent drag on it we're running okuma convectors and you got to have something that picks up line fast because if these fish come charging at you like this it's really easy to to lose fish this is a good fish man he's right there 
You see him? Sharking. Okay, I'm gonna keep him coming. You ready? Get him, get him, get him, get him. Okay, ready? Okay, back up, back up, back up. <laughs> that is one hell of a fish, dude. Wow, okay, that was old school. That was, uh, that was pretty cool. That was on the, just the regular white flasher. I don't remember what color fly that is, but dude, that is a freaking tank of a That's salmon. Cool. Nice, nice job. job. Nicely Ooh. done. Always a good start to your day when your first fish is a, I don't know, that's got to be a way upper 20 pound class. Lake Michigan King. <laughs> Look at the size of this thing, guys. What an awesome fish. Beautiful chrome fish here. Fish in early July and uh, just smashed the, the white flasher with, uh, I think it's the Auckland Marine or Aqua Frog Howie Fly. What an awesome animal, man. All right, one down, nine to go. So, this is the rig here, guys. I am gonna have to try to remember what color Howie Fly this is, but basically anything green works pretty well. And here's a little trick that I learned from. Oh, here's Dipsy, Dipsy, Dipsy. Yep, take him, take him, take him. Back the drag off, back the drag off. Okay, you're good. Take it. That's a king. Maybe. Just let him run, let him run. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Nice, dude. 120. All right. Well, while Tristan's fighting that, uh, I'm going to show you guys this little trick that I learned from Russell Gahagan. If you guys are new to salmon fishing, go check out Russell's channel, Russell's Fishing Tech. Um, the guy really knows what he's talking about. I've learned a ton from his videos, but I don't know if you saw what I did there. I was a little frazzled because we're hooked up. Run. Go, 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 go. If, you, if it gives you line, he's charging at you. Keep it tight. Is he there? Y'all keep keep it tight, man. Keep them coming. Um, anyway, what I did here, I actually did bunny ears. So instead of just taking the loop on the end of your flasher, or sorry, your fly leader, and putting it on here, I'm actually making bunny ears. So I double it up, spin it around. So now my line is basically double doubled up here. We're gonna put it back through and then tighten down. And what that does is it kind of locks that leader onto the swivel and it gives the fly a little bit more of a defined action. So that's something I learned from Russell. Russell, if you're watching this, I'm sure you're not, but if you are, thank you very much. Your videos are amazing and definitely has helped me catch a lot more fish this year. So thank you. And just walk them as far back as you can. You can go ahead and start walking. Just reel the diver all the way to the rod. Steely, I think. Got him. Janky net job, but nice steelhead, man. Yeah. Look at that thing. Wow, dude. That's a gorgeous steelhead. Look at the spots on its tail. Yeah. On the, uh, the Dragon Slayer Pro King, and I don't remember what fly that is. I got it. I'm so bad at the names of all the flies and stuff. Nice, man. Awesome. dub on the top nice and silver I'm sorry for the camera work guys it is kind of rolly out here today what an awesome fish man awesome. so cool all right we're gonna box that sucker grab a couple picks and absolutely get reset awesome man. actually go in shallow get out of some of this nastier stuff and see if we can't pick up a couple fish just kind of in the oh, oh here we go here we go we're not we're gonna catch this one and then we're gonna maybe think about doing that what? sure okay well we were just about ready to pull the plug here and go do something else but 
Never mind. This fish has other ideas. Uh, sure, yeah. It's probably a good idea. All right. Another one on the Dipsy. This one's the, the white. Actually, this is the same one we got that king on right away. Okay, maybe we'll keep doing this. Okay, here we go. Yep. All right, swing them on in. Another nice, wow, that's a nice steelhead. That's actually, that's my biggest steelhead ever. Look at that. Okay. Very nice. Awesome. Little dicey in the wind and waves here, but hey, we got her. What an awesome fish. All righty. That's actually my biggest steelhead ever, guys. What an awesome, awesome fish. Another one on the flasher fly. Come in here and take a look at how, like, boo that is. These things look so cool in the summertime. They get that kind of iridescent, sort of aqua blue color to them. Such a cool fish. Awesome. Well, maybe we'll stay out a little longer. I was just saying, you know, maybe we're going to go in and kind of get out of this nasty stuff, but maybe we'll give this a little bit longer, see if we get another bite, and then we might go back in shore and see if we can't get some cohos or something up shallow. But awesome, man. Another fish in the box. Love it. Let's see if we get a lake trout on this thing. Holy shit, I'm on, dude, I'm on. I got one. Dude, I got one. Go. I was just letting this out and I just got hammered. No way. I was just about to put this down on the downrigger and it just got hammered. No freaking way. Dude, I literally just, here, that's yours. Sure? Yeah, take it. Okay. I don't know what it is. I was literally just letting it down. Dude, that was wild. I don't know, I have no idea what it is. Maybe another steelhead or a coho or something. Uh, it's not far. I mean, I was just about to put it in the downrigger. That's actually insane. Like just letting it out. Oh, he's taking some line. Yeah. Nice. nice, dude. Okay, I'll take that. I'm thinking maybe we pull our stuff and go in shallower because it's a little gnarly out here, but hey, that's another beautiful steelhead, dude. Nice, awesome. Look at the colors on this thing. Absolutely gorgeous, just another boss. Nice, dude. Yeah, very cool. All right, sweet. I think we should pull some lines and get out of here. It's kind of not fun. Yep, absolutely. Sweet. guys well just made it home forgot to film an outro when we were actually at the marina but not a terrible way to spend a morning you know i took a couple days off from guiding here just to do some fun fishing after the holiday weekend and uh you know it worked out pretty well uh before things got real nasty we were able to get that king and a few steelhead in the boat we had a couple other drive-bys that we didn't hook up on uh but a lot of fun so you guys if you have a small boat and you're interested in going out and learning how to do this trout and salmon stuff out of your own boat you totally can. You don't need a ton of really expensive, fancy equipment. <clears throat> you know, yes, I have a temp and speed probe. Yes, I have downriggers. Yes, I have lead cores. You could go out with just some dipsy divers or even those weapon rigs I mentioned before and, and be totally dangerous and catch fish. So you don't need a ton of gear to do this. Uh, and like I mentioned before, uh, Russell, Russell's Fishing Tech on YouTube. I'm going to leave a, a link in the description here to go over to his channel. If you are interested in learning more about this stuff, Russell is a very polished very accomplished trout and salmon fisherman on lake michigan he has an awesome channel where he explains a lot of stuff in very amazing detail and uh you can learn a lot just from watching his videos i've learned a ton it's made me a much better fisherman on lake michigan so anyway uh salmon fishing should be getting even better here especially for small boat opportunities as we get into july and august a lot of the fish are going to start pushing in shallower and they're going to be very accessible so if you guys are interested in getting out and doing this uh now is the time and uh anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed this video i've got a bunch of fish to clean i will see you guys on the next one